Now at noon, people are rushing to buy last minute treats and costumes for Halloween. We'll bring you the spooky details in just moments. But first, Wheeling police say a man and a woman wanted in connection with a shooting Friday have both turned themselves in. Thank you for joining us for 7 News at Noon. I'm Rebecca Little. 33 year old Raheem Lewis Maxwell turned himself into police a late Monday afternoon. He was arraigned by an Ohio County magistrate where he posted a $5,000 surety bond and was released. Just moments ago, we've learned that 21 year old Sheena Anna Marie of Wheeling has turned herself in as well. Officers were called to the 1400 block of Market Street around 1110 on Friday night for a report of shots fired and an injured female on the sidewalk. Officials say the victim was taken to Wheeling Hospital for treatment. Covering Belmont County at noon after a high speed chase with Bridgeport police in July, a man got 30 months in prison yesterday in Belmont County Court. The jail time that Darren Scott Borsos has already done 56 days that will be counted. His driver's license will be taken away for three years. Belmont County Prosecutor Kevin Flanagan said Borsos was charged with fleeing from police. Flanagan added that Borsos was also previously charged with a fleeing offense and was recently released from incarceration for a similar offense. A traffic alert to pass along. A portion of Piney Ridge Road in Ohio County near the intersection with Raven Lane is closed through tomorrow. Crews are working on panel replacement and paving. They advise commuters to follow posted detour signs. 7 News is your local election headquarters. In just one week from today, voters across the Buckeye State will decide the future of abortion in Ohio. Issue 1 would stop the government from limiting abortions until the fetus can live outside the womb, usually around 22 to 24 weeks. The doctor of the pregnant woman can permit abortions after that. If the doctor decides it is needed to save the woman's life or health, Ohio Republican Senator J.D. Vance, who is against issue one, says it goes far beyond the old adage of safe, legal, and rare. I, I think that where we're going to end up as a country is where most of, of the rest of the world has ended up, where, you know, there are some accommodations for abortion, there are some exceptions and so forth, and that's where things end up. That's, by the way, not even where I want things to end up. I'm, I'm a pro-life person, but I think that's where most people kind of split the difference here. Vance says he thinks if Ohioans want to change the law, they should do it via the state legislature as opposed to enshrining issue one into the state constitution. And speaking of voting, as we get closer to next Tuesday, you want to make sure you are ready to head to the polls. Ohioans are going to decide on issue one, which has to do with abortion, while issue two is about the legalization of recreational marijuana. If you are planning to vote on Tuesday, your registration should have been updated or submitted already. That means if you are not registered now, you will not be able to vote in this election. If you plan to early vote, you still have time. You can cast your ballot at your county elections office on the days listed right there on your screen. Meanwhile, Ohio Governor Mike DeWine stressed the importance of teamwork among law enforcement agencies to stop violent crime in his opening speech at the Corrections and Law Enforcement Security Threat Group Conference yesterday. He urged state and local agencies to work together. The conference aims to unify everyone's approach to crime, gangs and drug cartels, which Governor DeWine considers big problems in Ohio, were the main topics yesterday. We hope people come away with a better understanding of the gangs, better understanding of the drug cartels, uh, better understanding of what each part of our criminal justice system does. Presenter shared intel about tattoos that identify a member of a specific violent gang, new strategies to take down criminals, and other essential information for law enforcement officials. As we look across the region this noon, Ohio State lawmakers are taking action against the Ohio High School Athletic Association, accusing the organization of price gouging and retaliating against a new law. But as our 7 News Statehouse reporter Natalie Thami explains, there could be more drastic steps taken. Maybe we're getting to a point where we don't need the OHSA. Representative Jay Edwards, the joint sponsor of House Bill 311 to prohibit price gouging for cash pay ticket options. The organization offers a cash option for tickets now was part of a new law that passed in the state budget in June. But now tickets at the gate cost $15 compared to $9 for student tickets online and 12 for adults. 
kind of shows how far they're separated they are from the intent of the legislation, from, from the from how far they are away from the state of Ohio. Edward says he thinks the hike ticket prices are retribution for requiring the cash pay option. In a statement, OHSAA says it's not retaliation, but the higher cash price was due to increased security costs, increased auditing costs, and the desire to avoid needing $1 bills in the change box. But Edwards tells me this is just one in a series of bad decisions. We're getting to a point where there has been such idiotic decision making that has taken place at the Ohio High School Athletic Association that the state can sanction high school sports. OHSAA say they welcome opportunities to discuss this with lawmakers. Edward says right now the state legislature has no relationship with the association and if it were a state agency sanctioning high school sports things might run more smoothly. They can listen a little bit more to the legislature since it appears that, that, that the OHSA doesn't want to do that. Edward says he can see why a state agency overseeing high school sports may trouble some, but tells me what's going on now is more troubling. OHSAA confirms they have $19 million in their investment accounts. Edwards, who is chair of the House Finance Committee, says he'd like to sit down with the association to review their books. OHSAA says they are willing to talk about their financial standing. I would love if we would stay as far away from them as we possibly can. However, some of their terrible decision making has led us to wanting to get involved with them more often. OHSAA says they're working to adjust cash pay ticket prices for the remainder of the fall contest this season. They say they'll have more details about that later this week. Natalie Fahmy for 7 News working for you. Thanks Natalie for that report. Now Halloween is finally here, but some people were busy trying to find that perfect costume up until the very last minute. Some customers went to other counties in the Mountain State looking for the perfect costume. There weren't many choices left in the stores, according to some shoppers. Dollar in law she had actually sent us over here to uh, get something for. Uh, she wanted something with the Wizard of Oz, but I guess the wizard's out of town because we can't find it. Stores throughout West Virginia say they had a hard time keeping up with demand for costumes due to supply chain and labor shortages. Halloween is here, and although it is one of the most fun days of the year, it can also be dangerous. 7 News reporter Annalise Murphy joins us now with some safety tips she learned from local law enforcement. Between the costumes, spooky decorations, and of course, the candy, Halloween is certainly a favorite amongst kiddos, but it's important to keep yourself and others safe while trick-or-treating. I spoke with the Wheeling Police Department today who gave me a few safety tips on how you can keep yourself and your family out of harm's way while trick-or-treating this year. It takes a lot of thought and effort to pick out or even make the perfect Halloween costume. And even though you may not want to ruin the look by wearing reflective gear, it's for your safety. Lieutenant Josh Sanders with the Wheeling Police Department says it becomes harder for motorists to see trick-or-treaters as the night goes on. Brightening up a costume with reflective tape, lights, or even glow sticks ensure motorists can see you. He also warns parents and trick-or-treaters to not run out in the road and to make sure you are using crosswalks. Lieutenant Sanders also had tips for those passing out candy. Make sure your, your property is, is clean and safe, right? Uh, leaves off the steps. Make sure there's nothing anybody can trip on. Um, if you're having your own Halloween party and handing out candy, you know, maybe not have a bonfire right next to where you're, you're handing candy out. We don't want anybody to get hurt um, while they're approaching somebody's house. Lieutenant Sanders says drivers need to get off their phone, stay alert, and drive slowly, especially through residential areas. For parents, he says to make sure you check your child's candy. If it's homemade, you probably shouldn't consume it. And if the candy wrapper has been tampered with, just throw the candy away. Lieutenant Sanders says they're going to have extra officers patrolling throughout each neighborhood in Wheeling to ensure everyone has a fun and safe Halloween. Reporting in Wheeling for 7 News, I'm Annalise Murphy working for you. Thanks, Annalise, for sharing all of those important tips. Let's take a look right now at a list we'd like to share with you. Wheeling Trick or Treat is tonight from 6.30 to 7.30. Moundsville is from 6 to 7.30. And Martins Ferry is from 6 to 8 tonight. And looking at a few other communities holding Trick or Treat tonight, Bridgeport is from 6 to 7. Fallensby from 5 to 7. And Cameron is from 5 to 6 tonight. And we have a complete list of local times for you over on our website at WTRF.com. 
Well, keep it here, 7 News at noon. We'll return in just a few minutes.